Just get a sense of your backside of your rib cage opening up. For most of us, that will be the most challenging area because most of us are so locked down with our lats, locked down with our erectors, okay? But just focus on that and you can change it very quickly. And then one more time. So breathe in. Perfect, that's awesome. So Dale, Dale's a great breather. Great job, but Dale. That's the yoga. It's all the yoga breathing, perfect. Okay, now, there's one more piece of this and you're all gonna go through this, except if you have low back pain. So if you have any back, back pain with this, you just let me know, okay? Now, we've got breathing in three, three dimensions. We're gonna to start to now add the core to this. We're just to layer on top of the core to her breathing. So Dale, what I want you to do is very, very gently bring one leg up off the chair, hold it right there, okay? Bring the other leg up off the chair and hold it there, perfect. So now she's in this position here. So now we still have the thoracopelvic cylinder, that TPC, aligned. She's starting to use her abdominal wall a little bit more to hold her legs up but I still want her now breathing into her cylinder in three dimensions. This should not change her ability to breathe when you're using your core muscles. Maybe not as deeply, but she sh should still be able to engage her core muscles. Okay, now breathe into my hands. So I'll make sure that yes, she still goes that way, that way, and then front to back as well. Three breaths, just like that, Dale. Perfect, and I really wanna make sure that she doesn't feel any low back pressure and she's able to get herself to breathe. And can you have a conversation with me? How's you, how are you doing, Dale? Good, you should be able to have a conversation if your legs are up. If your client's face is turning red, or they're struggling like this, that's not stability. That's like hanging on for dear life. Don't do that. They should be able to be relaxed. Like if you notice Dale, she's very relaxed. She's able to have a conversation with me. There's no breath holding. She's still able to get that three-dimensional breath. That's what core stability is all about. She's not bracing, she's not squeezing, she's not tightening. She's just activating muscles and maintaining that three-dimensional breath. Because if you think about Dale right here, and you can slowly relax back down, if we took her and put her in the upright position, what position is that would she be in right now? Seated, seated yep. It's also your squat position, yes? Seated or squat position. So what we're training her is to come up here and be able to do a, squ a squat and maintain that thoracopelvic cylinder alignment. Train her to do a deadlift and maintain that thoracopelvic cylinder alignment. Train her to do a, this, a lunge position and push or pull or do some lunges from this position. So we're training her of what we need her to do when she gets to the upright position, okay? Very cool. So now you're each gonna go through this process. So first thing, just find yourself some space with a chair. Just grab some space, move yourselves around. We got enough space in this room. Find yourself some space because you're gonna do a self-assessment. Thank you so much, Dale, that's oh, great. So just find some space, take your shoes off. Stand, first, first stand, please, first stand. I want you guys to check in with yourselves. So you're working with the group exercise class, it's a very simple way to have all your clients do a very quick self-assessment. Here's something very important. I was watching a group exercise class a few years ago, and I was watching them do an exercise, and then they stretched. They do another exercise, and then they stretch. So I thought to myself, they're doing very kind of simple exercises. And I'm thinking to myself, why do you need to stretch after you do a simple exercise? Oh, wait a second. A lot of people do exercise, then they get tight. Why do you get tight after you do an exercise? There's only one reason you get tight after you do an exercise. Because you've compromised something. Your body makes you tight, why? I'll stand up here just so, so you guys can see me. Hopefully this chair will support me. Why does, you, why does your body make you tight? To protect. to protect, exactly. So why would you need to do an exercise and then stretch? What were you trying to protect against? Hmm. Because if you were using proper range of motion during your exercise, should your exercise ever make you tight? No, watch this. If this is my, I'm, I'm gonna make this up here. If, this, if I have full shoulder range of motion, and now you ask me in my exercise class, do a shoulder press, and I use full range of motion, should that exercise make me tight? No, but what makes me tight, generally speaking? Because I don't use that range of motion, do I? I wanna use more weight, or maybe you say, hey, Evan, give me five more. So what do I do when I'm all fatigued? And you, say, and you say, give me five more. I'll give you five more. Exactly. I'll go, there we go. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Whew. And then what happens to my range of motion, though? Yeah. Now I check my range of motion, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a shoulder impingement. Because you compromise alignment, breathing, or the control. So what we want our exercises to do is always respect our clients. Alignment, their breathing, and their control. So the exercise isn't a cause of why your clients are getting tight. Does that make sense? Because our clients are bringing their same habits into their exercise class. So we want to change your habits. This is how we change their habits. Okay, now everyone stand and face me. Or some, somewhere where you, where you have space, okay? Now I'm not going to do it up here because I will fall off for sure. Feel your feet on the floor. So get a sense of your own feet on the floor. Feel the difference between two sides. And tomorrow, I'm going to show you something really cool with the feet. I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can change people's feet. But for today, just get a sense of where your feet are. i got to give you a little dangle. Whoa! Yeah, I'll stay still up here. Okay. Just feel your feet on the floor. Feel, is there more pressure on the outside of your foot, inside of the foot? Is there pressure different between each foot? Now, feel, just get a sense of your low back. Is there any tension in your low back just standing here? Does it feel pretty relaxed or does it feel kind of tense? Okay. Now, do me a favor. Run your hands down the sides of your hips. Your hips should be nice and your glutes should be nice and round and full. So run your hands down like this right here. Okay. How many of you feel like some hollows or divots as you run your hands down? Raise your hand. Yeah, many of us. You're good people, but you're over clenching your glutes. So that's another reason why a lot of our clients will have hip tightness, because they're standing with their hips over clenched. Okay? So keep track of that, because we'll see if we can change that as well. Now, stand on one leg, either leg, and get a sense of your balance. How good is your balance on that leg? How much did you have to sway to get your weight onto that leg? Now shift your weight to your other side. See how your balance is on that side. Okay? Which was your better side, the first side or the second side? First side, because your brain's smart. It's like, oh, I'll go to my better side. <laughs> and probably your foot is more stable on that side, too. Your foot's better connected to the ground on the first side as well. Okay? Cool. Now, just spread your feet out now like you're going to do a squat. So do whatever kind of squat you want. Okay? Go as deep as you want or as shallow as you want. Just get a sense of your squat. Just do like five repetitions. Just see what it feels like. Does it feel very easy? When I say easy, just effortless. I know you can squat all day long. You guys can probably do hundreds of squats with weights and so forth. But get a sense of what that feels like. Is it easy? Do you feel any pressure in your knees, your low back, your hips? Or does it feel relatively easy? Okay? Cool. Because we're going to compare afterwards to what you just noticed here. Okay? Now, find a place where you can lie on the floor with your legs straight. Don't put them on the chair yet. Just lie on your, lie on your back with your legs straight. Don't put them on the chair yet. Feel your low back on the floor. <laughs> Don't kick anybody. Don't kick anybody. Probably feels nice to lie down at this time of day, yes? That's why you cannot go mattress shopping in the middle of the day. It always feels good to lie down. Okay, now get a sense of your, your rib cage and pelvis and low back. Is it flat on the floor? Is there an arch? Where is the arch? Put your hands on your rib cage. Is your rib cage down? Or is it kind of flared up a little bit? Now, very gently, take one leg and just rotate it in. Just keep your leg straight, just rotate it in. Just feel how that feels. Compare it to your other side. Rotate the other side in. Get a sense of what that feels like. Just keep it down straight, you don't need to lift it. Is there a difference side to side? Okay. Probably have one side that maybe is a little more tight than the other side. Okay? Cool. Now, very gently, lift one leg up, just about three to five inches off the floor. Just keep it straight. Keep it straight, raise it up, put it back down. Same thing. Check to see how effortless that was. Put it back down, lift the other side up. You're just really, really assessing how easy and how free your movement is and how much effort you need to use. Get a sense of what that feels like as well. Okay? So now you just did a really quick, easy self-assessment and now we're going, to ch we're going to change your breathing, and then we'll go back to our self-assessment. Okay? Now, find your chair. Put your legs on your chair. Some of you will probably need something underneath your head. So use your shoes. You can use a towel. You can use your yoga mat. Try to keep your legs 
a little bit wider on the chair, as wide as you can on the chair without them falling off, okay? Now, just relax. Relax and go to your happy place. Just follow my instructions, but just relax and go to your happy place. First thing I want you to do is put your hands on your lower abdomen. So right inside your pelvis. So find your belly button and move down and out from your belly button. So your hands are in your, the lowest portion of your pelvis. I should say the lowest portion of your abdomen. Now without straining, we're gonna go in through your nose, out through your mouth. Three to five breaths. Breathe in to your hands. Send your breath all the way down towards your hands. Three to five, nice and easy breaths, no straining. And when you're done with your three to five breaths, just relax and breathe normal. Go back to your normal breathing. Now, place your hands lightly on your rib cage. Remember, we also need side to side breathing. We want to fill up that cylinder side to side. Now, three to five breaths into your cylinder, side to side. Breathe into your hands, and then breathe out. Your ribs should open up as you breathe in. The ribs should close down as you breathe out. Don't force the ribs down. Just allow them to relax. Let your breath take them back down gently. Nice and easy. Three to five breaths, and then return to your normal breathing strategy. The easier you make this process, or the less effort you use, the better it is. Most of our clients are straining too much with their breathing. We want to make this as effortless as possible. Okay? Now keep your hands upon your rib cage and get a sense of your back, the ribs, your back side of your rib cage. Now send your breath into the back side of your rib cage. Feel as if it's opening up into the floor. Don't worry if it's perfect or not. Your brain is very powerful. It'll send the breath where you need it to. And then breathe out and let your rib cage just relax in the front as you breathe out. So you're breathing into the back side of your rib cage. And then you breathe out. And let the ribs come back together as you breathe out. Breathe in and expand to the back side of your rib cage. And then breathe out and allow the ribs to come back down together. Three to five breaths and then go back to your, your normal breathing strategy. Okay, and just relax for a minute. <clears throat> Next, we're going to bring our legs one at a time up off the chair. Your legs, no, not yet, no, yet, no, yet. Your legs should be about shoulder width apart when you bring them up. Bring them up one at a time. There should be no pain, no pulling, no tightness in your back. And once you get them up, Keep your knees bent, keep your ankles dorsiflexed. So you should be at 90-90 position, 90, 90 degrees of hip flexion, 90 degrees of knee flexion. Now, keep your hands on your rib cage, still send your breath. You can feel your abdominal wall engaged a little bit better now. Send your breath into your cylinder all the way around. So create that three-dimensional breath now that your abs are a little bit more engaged because this is ultimately what you need to do when you get to the upright position. Remember, make it as effortless as possible. We want to improve the efficiency of how our clients are breathing and controlling their core. Now slowly put one leg down, put your other leg back down. Perfect, we're gonna do that one more time. So whichever leg you lifted first, start with the opposite side now. Bring one leg up, bring your other leg up. Again, there should be no low back discomfort, no straining. You should still be able to create three-dimensional breathing. Now breathe into your cylinder, three to five breaths. And then breathe out. Should be nice and easy and controlled. Because remember, this is ultimately the position you're going to assume when you get back upright and we start you squatting, start you using those hips properly. Three to five breaths. If you feel tightness in your back, then you do not have the proper core control to be in this position. That's okay. You don't have to keep your legs up. Just put your legs back down. And now slowly put one leg back down and put the other leg back down. 
Nice. Okay. Now give yourself some room. Put your legs out straight again. Recheck your self-assessment. So you lie down on your back, legs out straight. Now feel where your spine is on the floor now. Does it feel different? Does it feel more flat, maybe more even? Do you feel less pressure in certain areas of your spine? Put your hands on your rib cage. Do the ribs feel more relaxed maybe? Maybe a little flatter than they were before. Check your range of motion with your hips. Turn one leg in, one hip in, turn the other hip in. Does that feel any different, maybe more even? Does the tighter side feel a little looser now? Now slowly come back to the upright position and stand there and take a self-assessment of your feet on the floor. Feel your feet on the floor now. Remember which side had more pressure on it or more pressure on the outside or inside of your, of your feet. Feel your feet on the floor. How's the pressure on your feet now compared to before? Feel the tension. Just get a sense of the tension in your back. How's your back feel now compared to as before? Does it feel any lighter, easier, just more, less effortless to stand there? Now stand on your leg again. Just see if there's any difference when you stand on your leg. Does it feel more stable? Do you feel lighter? Does it feel easier to stand on one leg versus the other side? Now reverse it. Go back to the other side and just see if that was your more challenging side. Probably. Does that feel any different? Does it feel a little easier, a little more controlled? How many of you notice a difference? Not perfect? Is that how many of you notice a difference? Yeah, perfect. So we didn't make you perfect, but we started to move you along that progression to having more optimal posture and movement. Now we need to include taking this into the upright position. So spread your feet out like you're going to do a squat. So here's the cues we use with our clients, because we want to start to incorporate the hips now. Think about being long through the back of your spine as if you're being pulled from the back of your head towards the ceiling. So the chin should gently come down. Don't force it down. Just gently come down. Place your hands on your rib cage. We're going to change our breathing just a little bit just for this squat. This is not how I teach your, your clients how to squat, but just for this piece of the equation, our corrective exercise piece. I want you to take a deep breath into your hands here. Breathe into your hands. As you breathe out, I want you to squat down. So breathe out, squat down, and release your hips. Let your hips go wide. Women, your hips will not get wide. Just let them go wide. Okay? Breathe in to come back up. Breathe in and breathe out. Let your hips go wide. Let them relax. Let those hips relax. Breathe in to come back upright. Remember, we want the cylinder still stacked up. That's why your hands are on your rib cage. You're breathing out to help you relax some of that muscular tension that we've created. Breathe in to come back upright. Perfect. And then breathe out to release and come down into your breathing or into your squat pattern. And then breathe in to help you come back upright. That's how you start to use your breath to coordinate, coordinate it with your core and hip muscles. So you start to let the hips go because essentially we want to use our glutes without over squeezing them. Now place your hands.